So we talked about hadith Abu Bakr, the first route from Abu Bakr, second route was from Umar, then third route from, from Aisha. Then we have two more routes for this hadith that are main routes. We have the major one, which is Malik bin Aus. Malik bin Aus ibn al-Hadathan, um, he is a tabi'i, but he's a tabi'i who had lived before Islam, meaning he embraced Islam late. So he was actually among the people who used to ride Yani at the age of riding uh, horses in a jahiliya. So he had lived the prophetic time. Some scholars, they say he has ru'ya. He had seen the Prophet wasallam. But most scholars do not count him amongst the Sahaba, uh, obviously. Uh, he seems to have embraced Islam late. And uh, he... Uh, uh, narrates from Umar radiallahu anhu often and from Ibn Umar. Uh, he's not much known, to be honest with you, even though al jamiah was thaqahu, yani most of the uh, scholars, they declared him as uh, thiqa, uh, reliable in transmitting hadith. His hadith is extremely little. He has 27 total narrations in the entire books of Sunnah, bil mukarrar, with the repeated. Um, in the Sahih, he has a few hadith, uh, literally, only about this issue and its related issues. So, uh, and some of the hadith have issues, at least. So, anyway, let's talk. He's the one, Malik bin Aus, the Stabi'i, who was the representative of his tribe. He's a nomad Arab uh, or a Bedouin representing his tribe. He used to come to Umar radiallahu anhu, and uh, he was the representative of his tribe to Umar, all right? And he accompanied, he seems to have accompanied Umar also, and he was in Asham anyway, Malik bin Aus. Um, he accompanied him, Sham, yani when Umar radiallahu anhu went to Jerusalem, that's what I mean, right? Okay. The hadith obviously for Bukhari Muslim, uh, and Bukhari, rahimahullah, uh, based on his habits, he he, he uh, fragmented the hadith in four or five different five different places in his Sahih. That's his academic habit. He, he puts it according to different things. Uh, Muslim usually, as his habit, he likes to put the whole thing together. And also, Al Bukhari, rahimahullah, um, how how do you say coded some of the words uh, in the hadith, while Muslim just uh, said it. Uh, as it was narrated. And the reason Al-Bukhari quoted these words, yani, there was a slander, let me say, said, or cursing, or whatever you want to call it. Al-Bukhari said, Fastabba, they cursed each other, for example. Uh, a Muslim just actually said what was said. And uh, we'll see about this hadith. Uh, 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 hadith, obviously, on the authority of Malik and his Zuhri, and Malik bin Aus hadathahu. So let me actually, and this hadith is, Allah help us. So this is the hadith here uh, that is, uh, that actually he brings a lot of people because he brings Sahaba, like six other Sahabas, right? Malik bin Aus, a tabi'i, who narrates an event in Umar's time where Ali, Wal Abbas, Uthman bin Affan, Abdul Rahman bin Awf, Az Zubair, and Sa'ad all uh, witnessed that uh, they heard this hadith. We do not leave inheritance from. Uh, they all heard it from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All right. So uh, first one, translate it. Translation again. I translated it. Uh, picked it up from the. Translate translations online, and I looked at some words when I found that they're uh, mis wrong or uh, etc. I changed them, but mostly it's theirs. It's reported by a Zuhri that this tradition was narrated to him by Malik bin Aus, the Stabi, who said, Umar ibn Khattab sent after me, and I came to him when the day had advanced. I found him in his house. And so, you know, again, like I said, this Malik bin Aus is not really that known of a personality. Uh, a Bedouin who's not known much, but he's there and he's with Umar. He says, I found him in his house sitting on his 
uh, bare bedstead, reclining on a leather pillow. He said to me, Malik, some people of your tribe have hastened to me with a request of help. I have ordered a little money for them. Take it and distribute it among them, right? Like I said, Malik bin Aus used to uh, represent, come representing his tribe to Umar radiallahu anhu. I said, Malik bin Aus, the tabi, the follower is saying, I said, I wish you had ordered somebody else to do his job. He said, Malik, take it and do what you have been told. At this moment, his servant, uh, Yarfa, came and said, right? So uh, Malik, is this, Malik bin Aus is describing a situation. He was with Umar. Umar gave him some money to give him the scribe. He said, at this moment, uh, the khadim or the servant of Umar Yarfa came and said, O oh, commander of the faithful, what do you say about Uthman, Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Zubair, Sa'ad, who have, who have come to seek an audience with you. Basically saying all these big Sahaba, Uthman bin Affan, Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Zubair, Sa'ad, Nabi Waqqas, they all came to see Umar. Radiyallahu anhum ajma'een. He said yes. Umar said yes and permitted them. So they, he, they, were, they entered. Then Yarfa came, the Khadim of Umar came again and said, what do you say about Ali and Al-Abbas? Ali ibn Abi Talib or Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, who are also present at the door. He said yes and permit them to enter. Al-Abbas now, they entered. Now notice now you have what? You have uh, Uthman or Abdul Rahman bin Auf or Zubair and Sa'ad, all senior Sahaba, right? Senior. And then you have Ali wal Abbas, all senior Sahaba sitting. With them is Umar, and it seems that also Malik bin Aus, obviously the narrator is there. Anyway, in this here, um, uh, let me see, where was I? So uh, Al Abbas said, so when they entered, Al Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, said to Umar, O commander of the faithful, Decide this, this, settle the dispute between me and this corrupt, treacherous, and deceitful liar. Who is he talking about? Ali, allegedly. Right? Al Abbas is calling Ali these names in front of all the people. The people who are present said, Yes, commander of the faithful. Do decide this dispute and let them rest. Right? This is from Bukhari Muslim. Malik bin Aus said, now Malik bin Aus is the narrator of this whole event, supposedly. Uh, he said, I could well imagine that they had sent them in advance for this purpose. Yani by Ali and Al Abbas. So he, he's imagining that. Well, anyway, Omar said, wait and be patient. Wait and be patient. I adjure you by Allah, by whose order the heavens and the earth are sustained. Omar is saying, don't you know that the messenger of Allah said, we prophets do not leave inheritance to inheritors? What we leave behind is to be given in charity. They, and meaning all, they said yes. Notice. Right? They said yes. Then he turned to Al-Abbas and Ali and said, I adjure you both by Allah, by whose order the heavens and earth are sustained. Don't you know that the messenger of Allah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we do not leave any, in, any heirs, yani any inheritors. What we leave behind is to be given as charity. They also said yes. So now you have what? You have all four, is Abdul Rahman bin Auf, or Zubair, or Uthman, or Sa'ad Nabi Waqqas, all saying yes. We actually, by Allah, we heard the Prophet or we know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said so. 
uh, because they said, no, don't you know? Uh, he didn't say, don't you hear? He said, so it must have been knowledge, no knowledge. And now not only them, Ali and Abbas also know. How would Ali not stand uh, to say the Fatima and Al Abbas not stand to his niece and tell her, hey, where are you going? You're going against your father, but nobody spoke. This says, this is happening all the way now in the Khilafah of Umar, when Umar became the Khalifa. Keep, keep, keep that in mind. So anyway, both Ali and Abbas said yes. Then Umar said, Umar, right? Commander of the faithful at that time, meaning he was the Khalifa. Allah, the glorious and exalted, has done to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, a special favor that he has not done to anyone else except him. And he quoted the Quranic verse, which means what Allah has bestowed upon his apostle from the properties of the people of township is for Allah and his messenger, right? The narrator said, I do not know, Yani Malik bin Aus is saying, the narrator, I do not know whether he also recited the previous verse or not. He just recited this verse. Omar continued, the narrator is saying, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam distrib distributed among, among you the properties abandoned by Banu al nadir By Allah, he never preferred himself over you and never appropriated anything to your exclusion. After a fair distribution this way, this property was left over. The messenger of Allah would meet, would meet from its income, his annual expenditure. Omar is saying, yani basically these properties is where the Prophet ﷺ would actually spend his annual expenditures on. And what remained, he would be deposited in Bayt al-Mal, right? In the treasury, he would give it to the masakin, the fuqara, etc. Continuing further, Omar said, I adjure you by Allah. Basically he's saying that what the Prophet ﷺ had, he would take from it to his family and then he would distribute to the needy, to the needs of the community. And then he tells them, I adjure you by Allah, by whose order the heavens and the earth are sustained. Do you know this? They said, yes. Then he adjured Ali and Abbas. So it seems as the four on one and Ali and Abbas on one side. Um, then he adjured Abbas and Ali as he had adjured the other persons and asked, do you know this? They said, yes. He said, yani Omar now. And this is agreed upon in the sense that uh, what the Prophet ﷺ had, he would take from it his expenditures. He would also distribute it in his own way to the needy and what he thought was important. All right, hadith continues. Omar said, when the messenger of Allah ﷺ passed away, Abu Bakr said, I am the wali. Here, I guess, means the successor. But the wording in the Arab, in the hadith, in the Arabic is, I am the wali. I am the wali of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Abu Umar is saying, said Abu Bakr, I'm the wali of the Prophet sallallahu means I'm in charge, I'm, success, I'm the successor. Both of you, Umar is saying, both of you, yani to Ali and Abbas, both of you came to demand your inheritance. So that tells you what? For the uh, brother who has been saying Fatima did, no, it seems that here also Ali did. Obviously, we've already established Ali did, but anyway. Well, Abbas did. Both of you came to demand your inheritance from the property left behind by the Messenger of Allah. Right? Referring obviously to Abbas. Now, you demanded your inheritance from the property of your nephew or from the wealth of your nephew. And then referring to Ali, you demand, and he demanded inheritance on behalf of his wife from the property or from the wealth of her father. Abu Bakr said, Omar is now telling us the story that happened in, in Abu Bakr's time. Abu Bakr said, the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had said, we do not leave any inheritance for our, for our inheritors. What we leave behind is to be given in charity. So both of you, Omar now is continuing, after he quoted what Abu Bakr said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, so both of you, and he's telling Ali al-Abbas, 
held him to be a liar. And he held Abu Bakr to be a liar, corrupt, treacherous, and deceitful. Wow. So this hadith doesn't only tell us that at the beginning, Al-Abbas called Ali all these names. But these exact names are repeated by Umar to, to who? That Ali and Abbas both called Abu Bakr. From these uh, descriptions. And Allah knows, and Umar continues to say, and Allah knows that he was true, virtuous, well-guided, and a follower of truth. When Abu Bakr passed away, I have become the wali, successor of the messenger of Allah and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the wali of Abu Bakr. Umar now is saying, when Abu Bakr died, I became his wali and I became the wali of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You, right, to uh, Ali al Abbas, thought me to be a liar, corrupt, treacherous, and deceitful. Wow. And Allah knows I am true, virtuous, well-guided and a follower of the truth. I became in charge of the prophetic charity. Then you, as well as he, came to me, both of you together, and your purpose is identical. You said, entrust the prophetic charity to us. I said, if you wish that I should entrust it to you, it will be on the condition that both of you will undertake to abide by a pledge made with Allah that you will use it in the same way as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used it. So both of you got it. Yani now he, they're talking about the charity money in Medina or the charity fund in Medina, right? We said there was Khaybar, Fadak, Humus, right? There was charity money. That's the charity. Uh, he says that you would spend it that fund, that endowment fund, whatever it is, that you spend it the same way the Prophet ﷺ used to spend it. And you said yes. Then he said, then you have he then you have again come to me with the request that I should adjudge between you. No, by Allah. So now it seems that Ali will Abbas are fighting, right? Over this uh, charity fund. And Al Abbas called Ali all these uh, slanders and all these names. Slander actually is not. And and now they came to judge to have a judgment with them between with uh, Umar anhu, and Umar says no by Allah I will not give you I will not give any other judgment except this until the arrival of the day of judgment if you are unable to distribute the prophetic charity on this condition return it to me all right so this is now. <coughs> <coughs> this is the hadith that actually if you remember we said there are five major ways Abu Bakr's narration to this hadith that we do not leave inheritance Umar which is uh, uh, and then Aisha and then Abu Huraira and then Malik bin Aws was a tabi Malik bin Aws says six sahaba were present to say that six Sahaba said that they know of this hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. And this way by six and having four more, that's 10 Sahabi is narrating the hadith. And this is how sometimes people add up this math. However, I have serious problems, not only me, I mean, obviously. People have serious problems in this hadith. Anyone who's sane-minded and has read basic history and basic sirah and basic sunnah and basic Quran as well knows uh, that this is really, it's bizarre actually, uh, what's what some of these wordings, to be honest with you. Munkar, yani, bazaar munkar, this claim. Uh, the issue here is, um, uh, like I said, the narration is from Malik bin Aus. He's the only one, he, alayhi madar al hadith, he's the access of this narration. No one narrated this narration of the story from the six Sahaba who were present. Or Yarfa, the uh, Mawla, the servant of Umar, or Umar himself as well, right? So you have six Sahaba and Umar, so that makes it seven people, right? Seven Sahabas uh, total here. All of them, none of them said anything about this event ever. 
all this event comes from one link. And that link is the Tabi'i, whose name is Malik bin Aus bin Hadaf, right? Whose Islam was delayed a, little, a bit. He may, they said that he may have seen Abu Bakr. Some people they say he may have seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like, and he narrated from Umar, obviously. Uh, very, like I said, little hadith, qalil hadith. And that means his dabt is not verifiable in the best ways. Uh, so anyway, al matin let's leave the, uh, so we don't go into the issues in the hadith here. Like in the matin, the text of the hadith is seriously problematic, seriously problematic. And obviously, uh, Ibn Hajar mentions, for example, in his uh, commentary in Fath, he says, uh, uh, some narrators took pieces from this whole narration. I brought you Muslim because, especially for students of knowledge, Muslim is much more beneficial in this aspect than Al-Bukhari Sahih. Why? Because Muslim does not fragment. Muslim gives you the whole hadith as is, right? Uh, versus Al-Bukhari, uh, he would fragment the hadith based on different chapters that he feels the hadith follow, follows uh, or falls under. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, 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 he says that some narrators were selective in taking from this hadith that's why you may see I, the reason I put all this hadith in front of you so you understand whatever hadith you see from Malik bin Aus this is the full hadith, this is the full version and when some people just take one part of a version of this hadith or a, an abbreviated version well they're not telling the whole story uh, to be honest with you because the whole story is problematic and Ibn, Ibn Hajar says, وَلَمْ يَتَعَرَّضْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الشُّرَّاحِ لِبَيَانِ ذَلِكَ And none of those, the scholars who explained this hadith, actually surprisingly went and explained all that. وَفِي ذَلِكَ إِشْكَالٌ شَدِيدٌ And this is a serious problem. Uh, because he says, وَهُوَ أَنَّ أَصْلَ الْقِصَّةِ And because it's the... It points Sarih explicitly that Al Abbas wa Ali qad alima that they knew that the Prophet وسلم, said, La Nurat, we do not leave inheritance. Fa in kana sami'ahu min al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu uh, Abd al Hajar is speaking, not me. He says, if they had heard it, if Ali wa Abbas had heard it from the Prophet, وسلم, how do they dare ask it from Abu Bakr? Fa kaifa yatlubani min Abi Bakr? وَإِنْ كَانَا إِنَّمَا سَمِعَاهُ مِنْ أَبِي بَكْرٍ أَوْ فِي زَمَنِهِ And if they had heard it from Abu Bakr, which they did, obviously, بِحَيْثُ أَفَادَ عِنْدَهُمَ الْعِلْمِ So that they actually were satisfied that this was uh, a solid narration to the Prophet ﷺ that Abu Bakr said. He says, فَكَيْفَ يَطْلُبَانِهِ مِنْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أُمَرٍ How do they come to Umar and ask him for their inheritance? If they've already asked Abu Bakr, so he says and uh, uh, he, he went and, uh, uh, and, and and talked about some other things um, right other other things I mean, you all know now uh, 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 Fadak uh, the Prophet Umar عنه, took Fadak did not leave it. Yani left it and left it as sadaqah. Um, uh, Khaybar and Fadak, both, the share of the Prophet وسلم, was being now handled by the Khalifa. Whoever comes, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, they actually, uh, they would uh, uh, they would spend it. Uh, they would spend it on the, what, the, what the expenditures, the prophetic expenditures, and they would give uh, the rest to sadaqah. Um, Uthman, uh, when he came, he became the Khalifa. He gave Fadak entirely to Marwan ibn Hakam, right? So uh, it became now the property of Marwan ibn Hakam. And eventually, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz took it and returned it to Bani Hashim. Anyway, uh, the hadith is problematic in other things. Ibn Hajar mentions also, Fil Farood, when Nawawi also mentions. He says, Al Qadi Ayyad mentioned, Al Al Maziri, Rahimahullah. Al Maziri, Sharif Sahih, Muslim, Rahimahullah, big, big scholar, big Imam. Yani. What I mean by scholar Imam. Yani. Uh, 
sentence. He says, when Hajar quotes, when Nawawi quotes, when Qadi Iyad says, when Mazari said, Rahimahullah, هذا اللفظ الذي وقع لا يليق ظاهره ظاهره بالعباس. What the words that were said by Al Abbas on Ali is not befitting of Al Abbas. Al Abbas, we know, he's never said something like this. This is not possible that Al Abbas said. And then Al Maziri, Rahimahullah, said, وحاش لعلي أن يكون فيه بعض هذه الأوصاف فضلا عن كلها. And Ali is way above of having one of these descriptions applicable to him, let alone all of them. He says, وَلَسْنَا نَقْطَعُ بِالْعِصْمَ إِلَّا لِلنَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And we do, not, we do not say anyone is infallible other than the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَلِمَنْ شَهِدَ لَهُ بِهَا And to whom the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned. لَكِنَّنَا مَأْمُورُونَ بِحُسْنِ الظَّنِّ بِالصَّحَابَةِ but we are ordered to have good thinking about the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een wa nafyu kulli ra kulli radilatin anhum and that we uh, remove uh, filthy things that if are, they're attributed to them. Wa idhan saddat puruku ta'wiliha and if we cannot interpret what has happened nasabna al-kathiba ila ruwatiha we will attribute lying and forgery to the narrator. قال وقد حمل هذا المعنى بعض الناس and he says that why some of the scholars they removed deliberately on their own and arbitrarily in the sense from the full narration they removed some of these wordings تورعان he says out of scrupulousness from attributing something like that to the Sahaba between Al Abbas to Ali, and then Umar is saying that Al Abbas to Ali said all these things about uh, about Abu Bakr, and then they said all these things about him. And this is not the household of the Prophet This is not the adab of the households of the Prophet The adab we saw, even when a Sayyida Fatima disagreed, outwardly speaking, when when she was quoted a hadith, she kaffat. Like the hadith says, she didn't say a word. And that's it. She ended. I said, I'm not talking to you anymore. Anyway. Uh, and he says, uh, He says, maybe confounding, there was the, some of the narrators confounded this. Well, the narrator, the, the only narrator that has, the only one who ever narrated the story is one, the Tabi'i Malik bin Aus. So, and with little a hadith, um, the the matin for to me is definitely munka. Yeah, I mean, this hadith, even if the sad is sahih, لكن المتن منكر بلا شك ولا ريب. I mean, there is no doubt about this nakara of the of the matin, and and because uh, Ibn Hajar is saying also in his uh, in his Fath uh, al-Bari in explaining this hadith, he says هذه القضية جرت في مجلس فيه عمر وهو الخليفة. This happened in a majlis where Umar was there and he's the Khalifa. Uthman was there, wa Sa'ad, wa Zubayr, wa Abdul Rahman, radiyallahu anhum. Walam yunkir ahadun minhum hadha al-kalam ma'a tashaddudihim fi inkar al-munka. And he said none of them uh, 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 denied or challenged this narr narrative despite them being so strict in challenging evil. Which is saying what? He says, this kalam is munkar, is bizarre, and the present should have actually challenged it. And that's why, and since they didn't, they didn't say they challenged it, there's a problem with that. That's what he's implicitly saying, right? They didn't challenge that. I mean, how can, if that happened, and I, and, and I know the hadith is munkar to me. I know for Bukhari Muslim al-Hadith, I'm not saying anything. Asad may be sahih, wal munkar, by definition. Uh, and and uh, he's saying, how come if Yani uh, Zubair, Uthman, Usaad, how come they uh, allow Mathan? If, if it did happen, and I know it did not, inshallah, that Al Abbas would say uh, on Ali being a liar and treacherous and deceitful and corrupt, uh, and they wouldn't say no. That's you are. That's defaming, and that's Subab Sibabul Muslim Fusuk. And how can you? Uh, 
slander a Muslim or defame a Muslim. That's an act of fisk. And then they also would allow that, that Umar would say that about Abu Bakr that they have said about him and then that they've said about that and no one says anything. Uh, it's uh, right. Uh, and uh, Ibn Hajar says in Kanat Mahfuza al Mazri also, he says, if this narration is really authentic, then it needs to be interpreted, 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 etc., etc. Right? Same thing also, Al Aini Al Hanafi Rahmatullahi Alayhi and his Umda Al Qari also. He mentioned, he says, he says, uh, uh, when it was said, الكاذب, الآثم, الغادر, الخائن, بالله, he says, يعني, the liar, the corrupt, the treacherous, the deceitful, he says, المازري, المازري said, said that we do not attribute the one who said it to have said it, nor do we attribute the one it was said about to be have to actually be valid onto him either. And we actually attribute it that some of the narrators actually was wrong, mistaken. He says, And some of the scholars of Hadith removed these words out of their book, out of scrupulousness. The problem with just removing the ugly words or the uh, 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 bad words, evil words that were said in this hadith, you leave the rest of the hadith as if it's a fact, where the reality is these words are part of this hadith and it all ought to be judged as such, to be honest with you, because the, the metin has ishkal anyway. The metin is problematic, not just because of these wording, but also because of the event, because of the chronology, because of all that stuff, in addition to a tafarrud or the single narrator here being the access is someone who's practically more or less unknown in the sense of ilm, in the sense of uh, 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 plenty of narrations where his dhabt could be verified and cross-referenced. 27 narrations do not make someone, uh, 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 do not give a, a lot of leeway to verify, uh, to uh, comprehensive comparative analysis of all his narrations. So we know his dhabt. Uh, of Malik bin Aus, I'm talking about, right? And Al uh, Mubarak uh, Huri also in his Tuhfat al Ahwadi, I looked at his in Abu Abu Siyar, he tried uh, to solve this, but also I don't think he can simply because at the Metin, the text of this hadith of Malik bin Aus the Tabi is really problematic. So the, the Mubarak Puri tried, but I don't think he was successful. Uh, Al-Hadith also, if it is authentic, and in my view, it's munkar, it's yani, uh, anomalous, irregular, uh, bizarre, disclaimed, whatever you use for munkar. Al-Hadith uh, uh, mentions that Ali al Abbas came to Umar many times actually asking, uh, not just one, uh, and they didn't obviously accept Abu Bakr's claim, nor Umar's claim, etc., etc. And how does Ali يعني, say about Umar, uh, he is a uh, uh, liar, corrupt, treacherous, and deceitful? And we have a hadith for Hakim, uh, thiqat is trustworthy narrators. عن سفيان بن عيينة عن جعفر بن محمد الصادق عن محمد بن علي الباقر عن جابر بن عبد الله الأنصاري رضي الله عنه أن عليا حديث الحاكم أن عليا دخل على عمر وهو مسجى he entered the quarter of عمر after he was stabbed on his deathbed or while after sorry after he died right after he died فقال صلى الله عليك Ali is saying on Umar, Sallallahu alayk, may Allah send his salawat unto you. Thumma qal, then he said, in hadith Jabir, ma min al-nasi ahadun ahabbu ilayya an alqa allaha bima fi sahifatihi min hadha al-musajja. None of the people are more beloved that I, I go to Allah with his deeds more than this man whose body is laying here dead. So how can how can you reconcile uh, these things? Uh, you know, 
uh, his uh, uh, deeds that are so good. And then, and then you're saying all these things. Uh, obviously, the narration of Malik bin Aus here, it's uh, talking about the uh, time of Abu Bakr, not time of Umar. Uh, anyway, and that's obviously, uh, this happened in the time of Umar. This should have already, this has already been done after Ali, after the Hadith of Aisha, and Ali says, she said, where she says he gave the bay'ah and things were done and that's it. And uh, some scholars went into this hadith because they saw the hadith is problematic. Some scholar went to Rad, some people went to Ta'wil, yani either rejecting the narration or they interpreted the narration, yani rejecting meaning, saying there's munkar and ishkal and etc. And that's because Al Mazari himself said, And if uh, we, it's not interpretable, you, you have to say that one of the narrators has either lied or there is really serious waham, serious delusion in this. And therefore, uh, if you examine this very narration in Abu Dawood's and Ibn Majah, let's take, take Abu Dawood and Majah. This is, I gave you now in Sahih Bukhari Muslim, just so you stay out of the other books. But if you look at Ibn Majah or Abu Dawood, they both narrate the whole hadith with the same isnad. Ibn Majah, puts the whole hadith as is. Abu Dawood, he omits the wordings that he viewed as munkar or bazaar in this hadith. Right, he, he feels there's, some, there's a problem there. So he just, he, he omits it entirely, he just doesn't put it. Well, it's the same sanad, same hadith. All right. Um, <clears throat> Malik bin Aus, obviously I told you that uh, he's a tabi. All the scholars who spoke about him uh, said uh, he's yani Jarh wa Ta'deel, scholars of Jarh wa said that he is thiqa, he is reliable narrator. Uh, but like I said, his narrations are few. Uh, he's a, a Bedouin whose narrations are few. Um, yani 27 are not that much uh, to enable lots of cross referencing. And uh, this narration has serious nakara in it. Uh, it's possible that a trustworthy or a reliable narrator has nakara. That's not an issue in general. Uh, but also Ibn Adi mentions Fil Kamil, though it's narrated that Ibn Khirash, one of the Huffad, even though he's got his other issues, he's a half of an hadith, yani, Imam in Jarh and Ta'deel as well. Uh, he had said that uh, he's thiqa, he's reliable, but Ibn Adi narrates Fil Kamil uh, in volume four. He says, Samitu Abadan, I heard Abadan says, Qultu libni khirash. I asked Ibn Khirash, Hadithu la nurath ma taraknahu sadaqa. The hadith that we do not leave inheritance, whatever we left is sadaqa. What do you think about it? Because Ibn Khirash was a hafad. Ibn Adi says, the narration there, he says, Qala batil. He says, uh, this is in batil, the hadith is, is wrong. And he means the hadith of Malik, right? He says, Qultu man fi al -isnad. Yeah, He doesn't now talk about Abu Bakr, or or etc. He's talking about the narration of Malik and Aus Tabi. Qultu man fi al -isnad. Who do you accuse to have forged this isnad or lied or whatever in this isnad? Who is behind this isnad? Rawahu Zuhri wa Abu Zubair wa Ikrima an Malik bin Aus. Ibn Hadith. Zuhri, Abu Zubair, Ikrima, they all narrated from Malik. Atattahimu ha'ula, do you accuse Zuhri, Abu Zubair, Ikrima bin Khalid? He says, Qala la, innama attahimu Malik bin Aus. No, but I accuse Malik bin Aus. So anyway, why, take, I'm not saying anything here. I'm saying the Hassan is Sahih, but the Matin is Munkar. So yeah, I'm not necessarily taking what Ibn Khirash have allegedly said here in what Ibn, Ibn Adi mentions. No, anyway, Al-Madar uh, Ali, hadith, this is where the hadith becomes absolutely gharib. He's the only sole narrator. He's the common link. He is the one who actually narrates this hadith. It's not known from any, any other place. Malik bin Aus is. Ibn Sa'ad said Qalil al-Hadith. But I did not, upon researching, I looked at his, not all of the 27 narrations, I look at some of them. Uh, the ones that where he is the sole narrator, Tafarrad, are very, very few, to be honest with you. 
uh, and but I found other hadith that are munkar as well. Not that's not the only hadith, and he's the only narrator of it as well. Uh, and uh, uh, he narrates this hadith from Ali himself, and it's a bazaar. Yani munkar hadith without a doubt. The hadith fi tafsir ibn Abi Hatim, wal hadith sanaduhu sahih ala shart Muslim. Yani. And the hadith is through Ibn Abi Hatim narrates, he says, Haddathana Abu Zura'a and Haddathana Ibrahim bin Musa, and Ba'ana Hisham, Yani bin Yusuf, and Ibn Juraid, Haddathani Ibrahim bin Ubaid bin Rifa'a, Akhbarana Malik bin Aus ibn al Hadathan. Right? Malik bin Aus again. The same narrator. Now he's narrating what? Qalat kana in kanat indi amra'atun fatufiyat waqad waladat li. فوجدت عليها فلقيني علي بن أبي طالب فقال ما لك قلت توفيت المرأة قال علي هل لهبنا قال قلت نعم وهي بالطائف قال كانت في حجرك قلت لا قال هي بالطائف, هي بالطائف قال فانكحها قال قلت فأين قول الله تعالى وربائبكم اللاتي في حجوركم قال إنها لم تكن في حجرك إنما ذلك إذا كان and I, I, to make this the whole story short here Malik bin Aus the narrator here of this, he's narrating something which is really uh, uh, bizarre and r really uh, munkar because it is not just against uh, the jumhur of the scholars, it's an, against a very obvious hadith in Sahih al Bukhari Muslim uh, to say that it is possible for the, uh, the stepdaughters that for someone to marry their stepdaughter, well, right? Um, and uh, uh, in the case, they're saying, well, if the stepdaughter is in your care, then you can't. If she's not in your care, then you can. Now, the problem is this hadith is not only this, this agreed upon. I mean, this, uh, uh, this view, meaning stepdaughters are not permitted, obviously. Uh, but we have a hadith that's known in Sahih al-Bukhari Muslim by Umm Habiba, uh, bint Abi Sufyan, radiyallahu anha, Umm al Mu'mineen. When she said, قالت, قلت يا رسول الله هل لك في بنتي أبي سفيان أم حبيبة, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, she said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله would you like to marry my sister? He says أفعل ماذا يعني تنكح she says that you marry her. She, he tells her إنها لا تحل لي she is not I am not permitted is not permissible she is unlawful for me to marry. And then he told her at the end of the hadith, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَلَا تَعْرِضْنَ عَلَيَّ بَنَاتِكُنَّ وَلَا أَخَوَاتِكُنَّ And he said to everyone at the end, you should never present your daughters or your sisters to me. Your daughters cannot be presented to me. So it's a no knowledge. But Malik bin Aus says, Ali told him so. So, uh, and therefore, that's the second Munkar hadith. So therefore, I want to say that the hadith of Malik bin Aus, Munkar al-Matin, walaw sahha sanad. And in it, there is actually belying Abu Bakr anyway and calling him all kinds of names and belying Umar and calling him all kinds of names. And uh, Al-Abbas belying Ali and calling him all kinds of names uh, and all that stuff. So, uh, and therefore, uh, I don't really see the validity of the whole hadith of Malik bin Aus, to be honest with you, uh, based on the munkar of the, the nakara of the matin, even if the sanad is authentic, and therefore, it, in my view, it's disqualified from actually even being presented as evidence. Uh, because once you have bizarre narrations or bizarre wordings in the middle, uh, it seems like the whole thing is really doubtful anyway.